So I got Yoshi's Woolly World for Christmas, and I was pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed this game. It is adorable, and really creative with some of the level designs. It reminds me a lot of Kirby's Epic Yarn, which makes sense as they were both developed by Goodfeel. Wow, that's a fitting name, isn't it? It's been interesting to see the yarn aesthetic added to some of our favorite Nintendo mascots, because it not only makes everything so cute you want to squeeze it to death, but the games feel more original too, like you're playing in a pop-up book your grandma made. After really enjoying my time with Yoshi's Woolly World, I thought it'd be cool to look back at the source material, since I never played Yoshi's Island before. I know, I know, and after playing it, I was mad at myself too. This game is phenomenal. There's a lot of similarities and some things they do differently, so let's talk about it. The majority of gameplay elements from the original are still here in Woolly World. You swallow people to make eggs to throw around, and you flutter sometimes. The levels are pretty long, and some of them are even maze-like, where you'll have to go down branching paths to find keys and explore every nook and cranny. I like that both games have the every level is different vibe going on too, where you'll be introduced to new elements all the time. It keeps the game fresh the whole way through. They kept the transformations that happened to Yoshi, though this time it doesn't look like Yoshi has seen some things. And they aren't as plentiful as they were in the original game. It's actually kinda nice, they don't overstay their welcome and are a nice change of pace when you find them. They also kept the bonus games around for the sequel, and I don't really care for either version of them. But at least in Yoshi's Island it made you feel like you're gambling in some dino casino. Come on, three Marios, three Marios! There's a whole ton of reused enemies and bosses, they just updated them to newer graphics which I can appreciate. The whole gang is here, shy guys, moles, even the Koopas, but their shells are little buttons. That's delightful. Most of the bosses are just rehashes of the old ones with slightly varied gameplay, like them jumping in the background and changing perspective, but I mean, hey, I can't ask too much of this game, they're still really fun to fight. It does seem like the line between homage and originality is a little too one-sided though. It would have been nice to see some new baddies every once in a while. That being said, things do start to seem a little different when it comes to the level layouts. They take the yarn analogy quite seriously, and almost every element of the game world is arts and crafts related. You'll be throwing yarn balls to create pipes and windmill blades, and it'll be the same color as the ball you threw. That's a nice touch. You can climb walls that are knitted like a scarf. Heck, even the Shy Guy's javelins are crochet needles. It's just, oh, look at that. When you throw a yarn ball, it sticks to it. Oh man. But more on the art style later. Another big difference I know noticed is how they changed the collectibles. In Yoshi's Island, you could gather red coins, stars, and flowers, which all add up to 100 points. But in Yoshi's Woolly World, you can collect stamp patches, wonder wool, flowers, and hearts. So there's even more to be on the lookout for. In Yoshi's Island, you can unlock bonus levels by 100%ing all the stages in a world. And luckily, they continued to have bonus levels in our new adventure, but you only need to collect all the flowers in a world to unlock them. It's not as demanding this way, and it makes every collectible have a specific purpose. If you obtain all the wool in a level, it'll give you a new colored Yoshi to play with. And the stamp patches unlock stamps. Everyone's favorite thing to collect in Nintendo games. But it feels upgraded from the predecessor. Instead of just going for high score, you're trying to unlock all the secrets and rewards. Another thing I noticed is that even though Woolly World has checkpoints, it was still really annoying to go back to them every time you die. They got rid of lives, as they should have, but it always felt like I lost a lot of progress when I had to restart. And it probably stung more because I would often fall into a pit due to bad hit detection or something that didn't feel like my fault. But that's a small nitpick. Perhaps the biggest change, however, was the removal of Baby Mario, or reference to Mario whatsoever. This is definitely Yoshi's story this time around, and it's probably for the best. Having to retrieve Baby Mario every time you got hit wasn't actually as terrible as I was expecting. I mean, sure, his cry was annoying, but it was the stun effect that got tiresome pretty quick. It broke the flow of the game and felt like Mario was only thrown in for story reasons. Now, Yoshi doesn't have that poopy diaper of a burden and just has a normal health bar. But you know, without Baby Mario, we don't have this. Okay, seriously though, Super Baby Mario might have been my favorite part of Yoshi's Island. Here's an actual clip of me discovering this power-up for the very first time. Oh! <laughs> Look at this! Little Baby Mario with a cape! Holy crap! Oh, and I can use it to float down! Oh, he's so cute! It's just hilarious and awesome at the same time. And you know what? This is a huge part of the charm that Yoshi's Island brought to the table. I talked about how cute Woolly World is, but when you look at its origins, you can see why. I mean, just look at this stuff. This flying Koopa has to flap his wings extra hard to get back up. Aw, oh, come on, little guy, you can do it! When you swallow a big shy guy, it gives you the giant eggs. Oh, this guy's pants are falling down when I hit him. He's so bashful. Ah, oh, these little guys are controlling the spiky death sticks. Don't work too hard, guys. There's even 
even a freaking level where if you touch these fuzzies, you go into a drug-infused nightmare. Look at Yoshi's eyes! Holy crap, this game is just too much. It's the little nuances that make it great. On the surface, the crayon coloring book art style made it stand out, but it's the smooth animation and attention to detail that makes it still impressive to this day. Long story short, I can see why people call Yoshi's Island a classic. Does it have some dated gaming tropes? Sure. But as far as 2D platformers go, it's hard to top. It was a blast for me to go back and see where some of the characters in future Mario titles came from. And Yoshi's Woolly World does everything it could to bring this gem into the current era. It looks gorgeous and bright, and a lot of the original spirit is still there. I wasn't kidding about each level bringing in something new to keep you on your toes, and to keep the game fun the whole way through. If you're looking for another amazing platformer to try out like Tropical Freeze or Rayman Legends, but also want to turn into an 8 year old girl at the same time, Yoshi's Woolly World fits the bill perfectly. Hey guys, I'm Snowman. If you enjoyed, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more content just like this. If you've played Yoshi's Woolly World, tell me your thoughts about it in the comments below. Feel free to follow me on Twitter for updates on future videos or the occasional live stream. Finally, you can support the channel by donating on Patreon if that's something you might fancy. I'll see you guys next time. Stay frosty, my friends.